What up, Rafa Ladies? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about the contract with ExxonMobil. I want to talk about the contract between the government of Guyana and ExxonMobil, the petroleum company that covers, that's the contract that covers the extraction of petroleum in Guyana. And as you know, the production of petroleum has been moved up by three months, starting in December, just a few days from now, and this is an important time to discuss what Guyana can expect to benefit, how much money we can expect to earn from petroleum. So stay tuned. This is my, this is my, this is my day. I'm ready to take it on, come what may. So welcome back, Raffalitos. If you're new to this channel, this is Raffel Nation. I am Raffel, and the followers of this channel, the subscribers, are called Raffalitos. And we talk about politics, economics, food, and fun here in Georgia and Guyana. But today, we want to talk about economics. We want to talk about the contract between ExxonMobil and Guyana. And the reason why I'm addressing it now is for two reasons. One is because the contract has been kept secret until now. I've only now obtained a copy of the contract and it's only now that I'm able to read it and share it with you. And two, it's because petroleum is about to be produced, we're about three months ahead of schedule and Guyana is going to be required to lift a million barrels of crude oil every two months. And I'm going to explain how I arrived at that, a million barrels every two months starting in February and that is information that is in, uh, included in the contract. So let's talk about the contract. So the contract has 34 articles. So there are 34 articles in the contract and today I just want to talk about 10 of those articles. I'm going to pull out the most important ones to discuss with you today and they have to do mainly with how the oil is going to be produced, the production schedule, how the oil is going to be divided and shared and the monies that are involved, who gets money, who gets paid, and who pays what, who receives what. So that is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you a link to the um, website where you can find, you can download a copy of the contract and read it for yourself. It's going to take some time. If you're interested in hearing the entire description of all of the articles in the contract, um, leave a comment below. Let me know if you're interested in that information. But today I'm just going to talk about 10. I'm just going to pull out 10 of the articles and talk about them starting with Article 11. Now, Article 11 states that subject to the terms and conditions of this agreement, the contractor shall bear and pay all contract costs incurred in carrying out petroleum operations and shall recover contract cost as recoverable contract costs only from cost oil and or cost gas as herein provided. And later on in the same article, at uh, 11.5, the quantity of contract oil, the qu quantity of cost oil and or cost gas actually utilized in satisfying the recoverable contract cost may be allocated by the contractor to production from any field or fields. So this article, Article 11, allows us to define cost oil and profit oil. So, in Article 11, there is included a definition of cost oil and profit oil. And what this is saying, article is saying, is that ExxonMobil is allowed to recover the cost of its production and its pre-production costs, meaning exploration and so on, from a portion of the oil that will be collected, that is, extracted. Now, Article 11.2 states that all recoverable contract costs incurred by the contractor shall be subject to the terms and conditions of any agreement relating to the non-associated gas made pursuant to Article 12 um, be recovered from the value determined in accordance with Article 13 of a volume of crude oil hereinafter referred to as cost oil and or natural gas, cost gas, produced and sold from the contract area and limited in any month to an amount which equals 75% of the total con production of the contract area for such month excluding any crude oil or natural gas in petroleum operations or 
which is lost. So I focused on article 11.2 to isolate the number 75%. So what they're saying is that 75% of the oil or gas extracted in any one month will be assigned to the cost of the operation. So we can re represent Article 11 with this pie chart. And what this pie chart shows is that 75% of the oil, which is represented by the pink area, is cost oil. That is the amount of oil that will be dedicated to cost. And the blue area, that is 25%, a quarter of the oil, will ded be dedicated to profit or profit oil. Now you can divide that blue area further into two and you would get profit oil for ExxonMobil and profit oil for Guyana. So of the 25% of profit oil, 12.5% of that goes to ExxonMobil and 12.5% goes to Guyana. And that's how you get the 100% of the oil produced in any month. Now if you further divide that pie chart into equal slices, eight equal slices, what you can see is that you have eight separate production uh, quotas in this uh, pie chart. And what that means is that based on the production schedule, we know Exxon will start producing 120,000 um, barrels per day and that they have already declared that a million barrels at a time will be lifted from the FPSO, from the floating platform for storage and offloading, the, the Liza Destiny, we know that a million barrels of oil will be lifted at a time. Now, the Liza Destiny has a capacity of 1.6 million barrels of oil, and the oil well pumping at 120,000 uh, barrels per day will accumulate 1 million barrels of oil every eight and a third days. So it will take just over eight days to accumulate a million barrels of oil. And as soon as it gets to a million barrels of oil, or as soon as it passes a million barrels of oil, one of the parties will be required to lift that oil and take it to market, take it to sell it. So ExxonMobil has decided that every time you get to a million barrels of oil, one of the parties will lift a million barrels and take it to market. What our pie chart is showing is that you can get eight million barrels of oil in 64 to 67 days, about 67 days. So every two months, Guyana will be required to lift a million barrels of oil. So six million barrels of oil will be lifted once every eight days for six weeks straight, or six cycles of eight days, and that will go towards cost. Then the seven million barrels of oil will be lifted by ExxonMobil, and that will go towards Exxon's profits. And then Guyana gets to lift a million barrels of oil. That goes to Guyana's profit. And then the cycle repeats. So this will take eight cycles. Every time Guyana is, to lift, is required to lift its million barrels of oil, we have to go through the cycle uh, to get to eight, millions every time, eight million barrels of oil. And that means in the, in, in the year 2020, Guyana will collect about six million. So we will get six millions of barrels of oil in 2020 because they are about approximately uh, six two-month cycles in 2020. And that six million barrels of oil is will, what will be sold to produce a profit for Guyana. And that will amount to, if we sell at $60 a barrel, that will give us about $360 million in profit for Guyana. Okay, so I'm going to go through the remaining articles, that is, the other nine articles that I've selected for this video very quickly because I don't want this video to get too long and I'm going to leave a link uh, of the website where you can find this uh, contract in the description below so that you can read it for yourself. But let me go through very quickly, just summarizing what happens to these nine articles that I've selected. Article 13 says that valuation of crude oil, it deals with the valuation of crude oil and natural glass, and it's basically saying that the valuation of the crude oil will be based on the previous month's um, cost. So for whatever price ExxonMobil or Guyana is able to obtain at the market for crude oil in the previous month, that will be taken as 
the average value of the crude oil that is uh, extracted during that previous month. And that's important because it allows you to calculate how much of the cost is being mitigated. In other words, when Exxon sells that oil, it gets a certain amount of money, and that money is applied to the prior cost. You know, Guyana is responsible for $460 million of exploration costs and the operating costs and so on. So we need to know specifically how much money is collected when that oil is sold. And Article 13 simply states that the cost or the price of oil will be determined from the average price obtained in the previous month. Now, Article 15 deals with tax taxation and royalty. And this is important because this is the one <laughs> that go gets most people going. In other words, it cranks most Guyanese up. And uh, let me read a portion of it that is relevant. It says that um, subject to Article 32 and except as provided in Article 15, Point two and 15.8 and except as otherwise set forth in Article 15.1, no tax, value-added tax, excise tax, duty, fee, charge, or any import shall be levied at the date hereof or from time to time hereafter on the contractor or affiliated companies in respect to the of income derived from petroleum operations in respect of any property held transactions taken undertaken or activities performed for any purpose authorized or contemplated here and under other than and it lists some exceptions but what is interesting in this article is that it says Guyana can collect no tax no income tax no corporate tax no excise tax no duty no value-added tax nothing can be conducted from ExxonMobil for the operation not even from the contractors or the subcontractors of the oil operations nobody can be taxed um, for the operations and this is um, of course very concerning to the business community in Guyana because we have a very difficult time getting um, any kind of tax break breaks from the Ministry of Finance. In other words, we are some of the highest um, taxed businesses in, in, the, in the country, in fact in the world, and we find it very, very curious that the government charges no tax, none whatsoever to ExxonMobil or any of its um, uh, subsidiaries, in other words, any of the subcontractors. Article 10 states that there is an annual license charge of a million U.S. dollars. So for as long as the license is held, the exploration license is held by the contractor, this is ExxonMobil, and of course it might, maybe also applies to Tulo, but this is the contract for ExxonMobil. It means that every year they must pay a million dollars to the government of Ghana, and this has been in fact since 1999, so there are about 20 million dollars of um, licensing fees that have been paid to the government so far. Article 32 is about the stability and this article simply states that there can be no change, the government cannot change the taxes, the government can't renegotiate the contract without prior consent from ExxonMobil and the government cannot increase the taxes or add any kind of taxes, you can't change the laws and make um, increase the burden on ExxonMobil. Article 33 states that there's a signature bonus of $18 million payable to the Bank of Guyana. Article 30, 30 states that the effective date is 1999. In other words, it has been signed, the contract was signed, initial contract was signed in 1999, and that 1999 contract uh, continues to be effective in effect. Article 31 is a miscellaneous section. So Article 31 is a miscellaneous section that deals with territorial claims. It says that the government of Guyana is responsible for all territorial claims on the contract area. So ExxonMobil will not be responsible for Venezuela's claims on Guyana's territorial waters. Article 28 states that it's the responsibility of ExxonMobil to clean up its own oil spill. In other words, if there's an oil spill or any kind of environmental um, damage that's done during the operation of uh, the contractor that is ExxonMobil, they are responsible for cleaning up all the oil spills. There, guys, are the articles that are interesting in the contract. Yeah, so those are the articles in the contract that I've uh, highlighted for discussion today. If you want to see more content like this, click like and subscribe. If you want me to go through the other articles of the contract that deal with other aspects of the operation of ExxonMobil, let me know in the comments below. Also in the comments below, let me know what you think about those articles that I described so far, particularly articles about the 
cost of the operations, how it will be covered, the lifting schedule, how much oil Guyana will get. Remember, we're getting a million barrels every two months, and how those costs will be calculated and, and referred to or paid to Exxon Mobil. Right, so I hope this allays some of the um, controversy and some of the misinformation, clarify some of the misinformation out there about the contract. It is, in fact, a good contract, given the fact that Guyana did not pay any money up front for the exploration. In other words, we did not, as a country, lay out any money for the operation, the exploration. And ExxonMobil so far invested about four billion U.S. dollars, none of which came from the government of Guyana. So the fact that we're only getting 2% in royalty and 50% of the profits is a very, very good deal, in my opinion. But tell me in the comments below, tell me what you think, and tell me if you'd like me to discuss more of this contract, more of the details of this contract with ExxonMobil. Remember, you can support the channel on Patreon and PayPal. PayPal. Share this um, video with friends and family around the world. Like and subscribe, and let people know what's happening in Guyana. Later!